not having had, because these people typically haven't had any math ed courses or any kind of that stuff, they're injected into a one-year intensive program at either Columbia, in this case, NYU or, or Bard College, which programs are, will work by us a little bit, but they're your standard programs. One year, you get a master's degree, you get certified, and you learn all that stuff that they didn't learn in college. And then you go off and teach. Now, what do they get? How do we get them to come in? Well, we pay their tuition for that first year. We give them uh, $28,000 as a fellowship, which is not so different from a typical graduate fellowship. And then they get stipends on top of their teacher's salaries. And what do they get? The first year they get an extra 11000 We pay that, by the way. We pay that. It doesn't come through the school, uh, the school district. We pay those. 11000 the first year, 14000 the second year, 17000 the third year, and 20000 the fourth year. So by the fourth year, they're getting a bump of $20,000 a year on their salary. Now, I just told you what the salaries were. They're not too terrific. And even that extra $20,000 doesn't make it all that terrific. But you know what? It's a distinguishing thing. It's a nice amount of money. And it makes people quite happy. At the same time, uh, we, there's an ongoing mentoring. They get together. We have dinners. And there's a real esprit de corps that's developed among uh, these, this, this group of people. Now, there's another entry point, and both are important. And this is the, the master teacher side. So again, people apply who are already teaching. This is all for the New York City public schools. That's where we, that's where we live. That's where we live. And uh, it's for existing teachers. They have to take the same test. Do you know the subject you're teaching? A lot of them don't, but, uh, but some do. And they take the test, they get interviewed, and they become master teachers. And of course, when I say that uh, the average teacher doesn't know these subjects that he or she is teaching, it doesn't mean none of them do, because some do. And these folks are great, and they become our master teachers. And we give them uh, a $50,000 grant over a four-year period, so it's, you know, it's a modest thing, but it's $50,000. Stay teaching. Just stay in the school and teach, and mentor the junior fellows that are coming up through the other route. And they become part as a binding process, as a bonding process, so that the younger, younger people and the older people, not that they're so old, by the way, the older people, but the senior peop people bond together and have created now an increasing community of first-class math teachers in New York City. It's not so big. We've only, this is only the fourth year we've been doing this program. But it's growing, and it works. And we think those people will stay in the field, in particular if the young ones can become master teachers after they finish their stint. So this is great, but it's based on private charity. And I don't think that private charity can provide everything that America needs. When we started Math for America, it was with two goals. One, to do something for New York City, and the other was to build a pilot program that the federal government could copy and make something that was national. Now, I know I'm talking to a lot of state governors who have ideas of programs in their own states, but I'm telling you what our idea was, and it's not a bad idea, to make something, to make a national program. And we'll get to that in a second. So that was our idea, that it was fine to do this in New York with limited funds, private funds, but it would be really fine if, like the NDEA of 50 years ago, we could do that this on a national scale. So what would it be? It would to create a, a core of mathematics and science teachers nationwide. We give it a name, MISTIC, M-S-T-C, Math Science Teaching Corps, the MISTIC Corps. And it would be the same principles as, as Math for America. You take a test, uh, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, but better than Math for America, you get the respect of belonging to a federal program, to a federal corps of, of outstanding teachers. Now, we have been selling this hard in this city that we're all sitting in. Uh, uh, Schumer and, uh, and Saxton introduced a bill a year ago, this mystic bill, and it sort of sat there like a, like a well, in Yiddish we would say a latke, it just sort of sat, it didn't do much. Uh, not that I'm a Yiddish speaker, but I, I know a few words. Uh, uh, it didn't do much, but on the other hand, it, it existed, so that was good. And uh, it was a bill just along these lines. Then, 
The, the uh, competitiveness bill last year that, uh, that, that Enzi and Alexander were working on, there was a lot of talk about possibly including it in that bill. It wasn't, and that bill didn't go anywhere. But now that bill, this competitiveness bill is, is uh, about to be uh, reintroduced. This time the co-managers are, are Kennedy and um, Bingaman. And we're talking to their staffs a lot. And there's a reasonable probability that uh, this Mr. Core will be one way or another attached to that bill. We really have some good momentum going. It's taken a little while, but people are getting the idea. And we really are optimistic that this could happen. So, and it would be on a national level exactly the kind of uh, a program that I mentioned that we're doing in New York. It would be administered by the states. My idea was that the federal government would pay it all, and we'll get to what it will cost in a minute. But it's probably will be the case that there'll be, the federal government would put up money and the states would be asked to do some kind of matching and the states would, uh, would, uh, would, the federal government would set the guidelines, the standards, and the states would administer it. So it would be a, a probably a, uh, a cooperative program. Now, a full-size program, in my opinion, would provide the 20 percent of U.S. teachers of math and science would be members of this core, 20 percent. And that would cost $2 billion a year. Well, $2 billion a year is a lot of money, but that's what it would cost. And there's, there's actually a good chance. Now, I'll tell you, if something like this was put into practice, that 20 percent of the math and science teachers, that's seventh grade on through uh, high school, the math and science teachers were of the quality that I know we can attract with, with a program that has this, this much power to it. It would be transformational. The teachers, of course, would be proud to be members. Parents and kids would be proud to have such teachers. And the country could be proud to be finally moving in the right direction. Now, I'll leave you all with one final thought and say thanks. So here's my final thought. I discovered the other day that our annual bill now for intelligence, whatever that is, is $45 billion. That's what we spend for intelligence. Now, God knows what we get for that $45 billion. Uh, <laughs> I, I won't say anything more about that. But uh, for $2 billion a year, we could really make America intelligent. And I urge you all to communicate that simple thought to your congressional delegations. Thanks very much. Take a huh? yeah, sure. yeah, I'll take some questions.